12, The Forces of Evil. When Flora came back upstairs after dinner, she found Ulysses curled up in a tight little ball, sleeping on her pillow. She put out her hand and touched his forehead with one finger. His eyes twitched, but they didn't open. She picked up the pillow and moved it carefully to the foot of the bed. She changed into her pajamas, lay down, and imagined the words, a superhero squirrel rested at her feet. And so she was not lonely at all, emblazoned on the ceiling above her. That's exactly right, she said. Before the divorce, before her father had moved out of the house and into an apartment, he had often sat beside her at night and read aloud to her from the illuminated adventures of the amazing Incandesto. It was her favorite, it was his favorite comic. It always cheered him up to read about Alfred T. Slipper and Dolores. Her father did an excellent parakeet imitation. Holy bagumba, he would say in the voice of Dolores. Holy unanticipated occurrences. Holy unanticipated occurrences was what Dolores would say when something truly unexpected and unbelievable was happening, which was basically all the time. Life was pretty exciting when you were in Condesto's parakeet. Flora sat up and looked down at the sleeping squirrel. Holy unanticipated occurrences, she said. It sounded better when her father said it. Not that he said it these days. He didn't say much of anything anymore. Her father had always been a sad, quiet man, but since the divorce, he had become even sadder and quieter, which was fine with Flora, really. Cynics don't like a lot of chatter. Besides, Alfred T. Slipper was a quiet man, too. For instance, when he was on his tour of the Incandesto manufacturing facility and had fallen into the vat of Incandesto, he hadn't said a single word. Not even, oops. Words had appeared above his head, however, and Flora's father had read those words to her so many times that she could recite them by heart. He is an unassuming janitor, but he will dare to battle the darkness of the universe. Do you doubt him? Do not. Alfred T. Slipper will live to fight the forces of evil. He will become known to the world as Incandesto. Flora lay back down. If the squirrel were in a comic, she thought, what words would have appeared in the space over his head when he was sucked into the vacuum cleaner. He is an unassuming squirrel. Yep. But he will soon conquer villains of all stripes. He will defend the defenseless and protect the weak. That sounded good too. He will become known to the world as Ulysses. Holy bagumba. Anything could happen. Together, she and Ulysses could change the world. Or something. Do not hope. Instead, observe, Flora whispered to calm herself down. Just observe the squirrel. And then she fell asleep. Chapter 13. The Typewriter. He woke in darkness... His heart was beating very fast. Something had happened. What was it? He couldn't think. He was too hungry to think. He sat up and looked around the room. He was in bed, and Flora's feet were in his face. She was snoring. He could see the outline of her round head. He loved that head. But man, he was hungry. The door to the bedroom was open. Fl Ulysses got off the pillow and went out of the room. He crept along the dark hallway. He went down the stairs and past the little shepherdess. The house was dark, but there was a light on in the kitchen. 
the kitchen. That was exactly where he needed to be. He put his nose up. He sniffed. He smelled something cheesy. Wonderful. He ran through the living room and the dining room and into the kitchen. He climbed up on the counter and there it was. A lone cheese puff perched on the edge of the red formica countertop. He ate it. It was delicious. Maybe there were more cheese puffs. He opened a cabinet and yes, there was a big bag with the beautiful word cheese oh mania written in golden script on the front of it. He ate until the bag was empty. And then he burped softly, gratefully. He looked around the kitchen. You can kind of see this a little bit better. He's eaten the cheese, oh, mania cheese puffs, and then he spots that typewriter. Oh my. What happens next? In the darkened kitchen, the unassuming squirrel worked slowly. His whiskers trembled. His heart sang. Was he fighting evil? Who could say? Chapter 14 Squirtle Flora Bell Buckman, get down here right now. Don't call me Flora Bell, Flora muttered. She opened her eyes. The room was bright with sunlight. She had been dreaming something wonderful. What was it? She had been dreaming about a squirrel. In her dream, he was flying with his legs straight out in front of him and his tail straight out behind him. He was a squirrel on his way to save someone. He looked supremely, magnificently heroic. Flora sat up and looked down at her feet. There was Ulysses sleeping on the pillow and he did look heroic. In fact, he was glowing just like in Candesto except oranger. He was extremely orange. What the heck said Flora. She leaned over Ulysses and reached out a finger to touch his ear. She held the finger up to the light. Cheese. He was covered in cheese dust. Uh-oh, said Flora. Flora, her mother shouted. I'm not kidding. Get down here right now. Flora went down the stairs and passed Marianne, whose cheeks were glowing a healthy and disgusting pink stupid lamp said flora now shouted flora's mother flora broke into a trot she found her mother standing in the kitchen in her bathrobe staring at the typewriter what's this her mother said she pointed at the typewriter that's your typewriter said flora she knew that her mother was absent-minded and preoccupied but this was ridiculous. How could she not recognize her own typewriter? I know it's my typewriter, said her mother. I'm talking about the piece of paper in it. I'm talking about the words on the paper. Flora leaned forward. She squinted. She tried to make sense of the word typed at the top of the page. Squirtle. I'm going to stop right there. Stay tuned. There's 